Ah, thank you so much. One more time for Allison, let her hear it. Give it up for Shannon as well. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, give it up for yourselves, for coming out, enjoying your life. This is awesome. Thank you, Denver Media, for having us. We're gonna have a good time tonight. Uh, it's already been amazing. My name is Jeff. It's Jeff with a G. So it's just straight up Jeff the wrong way. Yeah, G off. My parents were like, hey, let's give him a super regular name, but let's also make him have to explain it a lot to people. It's like, cool, thanks, parents. My middle name is Carlton. Yeah, what? <laughs> yeah, it didn't click for me until I went to the DMV and the lady behind the counter goes, oh, Jeffrey with a G and Carlton. Looks like someone's parents were fans of the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. <laughs> and I was like, ha ha, what? I was like, lady, I've never realized that before. And she leaned over the desk and she's like, you're a real big idiot, aren't you? <laughs> and I was like, that's so aggressive for the DMV lady. I was like, take it easy. It's like, all right. I was like, that's crazy, lady. I've never realized that before. She goes, that is weird, man, because it says it right here in your ID card. It says your name is Jazzy, Jeffrey, Carlton, Will, Smith, Uncle Phil, Tice. <laughs> your name's the whole cast and crew, man. You're an idiot. <laughs> All right, take it easy, lady. It's very rude. I, uh, I got coffee before the show. I walked in, and there was a coffee shop. <laughs> Someone wound for coffee. Give it up for coffee real quick. <laughs> yeah, everyone. <laughs> That's the best ever. Uh, sweet. I got coffee, and I walked into the coffee shop, and there was a sign uh, at the coffee shop that said, Soup of the Day, Mexican Fiesta Soup. And I got excited, because I'm hoping that somewhere in Mexico right now, there's a sign at a coffee shop that says, Soup of the Day, American Party Soup. <laughs> what does that soup look like right now? It's just like a hot dog floating in warm broth. Just, ah. <laughs> just like a red Solo cup filled with mayonnaise. Just, ah. It's just a gun. All right, we'll just... <laughs> Don't laugh at that. Stop it. Stop it right now. That's good. Uh, my wife and I, some good news. My wife and I, we just bought our first home together here in Denver, which is exciting. Uh, yeah, that's an expensive woo. Thank you. What are we doing? We are idiots. It's so ridiculous. We saved up for so long, and we bought like a nice, quaint, like two-door Ford Fiesta. Yeah, Denver's out. We waited for like the worst possible time in the history of Colorado to try to buy a house. It's such a nightmare. We looked at over 30 homes, and we put in eight offers. And the first offer that we put in below asking price of the house, first offer below asking price, we just got a text message back from the real estate agent that was like, ha, LOL, 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 nah, dude, and then just four pages of the middle finger emoji. I was like, all right, man, that's weirdly unprofessional for a real estate agent, but okay, I guess, I appreciate it. I'm excited, we live out in the suburbs, which is fine. It's the same kind of neighborhood I grew up in, uh, but we've got just like a bunch of like garbage kids causing problems in our neighborhood at night. Yeah, just like trash kids, which is cool. I, yeah, trash kids, man, you guys, the troublemakers. I was one of those kids growing up. That's totally fine. I'm just excited to be able to give back to like the garbage kid community in my neighborhood. So what I've started to do to help them out and make them progress in life is I've started to fill up my mailbox all the way to the top, like to the brim with loose glitter yeah, in the hopes that some kid drunk two in the morning drives by with his buddies with a baseball bat, and he's like, oh yeah, boom, oh my God. I'm gonna change that kid's life forever. That kid got drunk with his friends, went out and vandalized some stuff, and found God all in one evening. Changing his life, he's gonna make it, he's going to college, he's gonna do it. He won't, he's a piece of garbage, come on, he's hitting mailboxes with baseball bats, it's not good. I, uh, we've got like an old Vietnam War vet. He has like the hat. Uh, he walks by our house every day uh, and he lets his dog poop in our yard every day, which I felt like is a little aggressive. And so what I've started to do to help that is I've taken the nativity scene from Christmas and I dress that up like the Viet Cong. That's correct. It's the correct response to that. Yeah, you guys are right. But I found out, guess, like, guess how many times a day now that dog poops on my yard? 
twice a day, still. He doubled down hard on that. I made him real angry. Apparently, he wasn't even in Vietnam. He just bought the hat at a thrift store. He was a firefighter for 30 years. He thought it was just some weird performance art protest going on. Made him real mad. He brought the dog around a couple more times. Basically, what I'm trying to say is, guys, support the troops. Give it up for the troops real quick. <laughs> yeah. Coffee and the troops. That's what my set's about tonight. Give it up for coffee and the troops. It's good. I, uh, you guys are fun. You guys having a good time? Feeling good? How's everyone doing at home? Thank you for being on your couch and watching on the internet. It's very fun. It's a good time. Uh, I'm married. I've been married for a long time. like super married. I've been married for a long time. My wife and I, we dated for eight years before I finally asked her to marry me, which, yeah, I found out is way too long. That's so long. No one cares about your life or relationship at that point. It's way too long. When I finally asked, half the reaction was all my wife's friends just like, yeah, finally, you idiot, you moron. And then the other half was all my buddies just being like, we thought you were married already, man. We had no idea. You stopped hanging out with us like five years ago, bro. <laughs> just like, cool, good friends. When I finally asked my wife to marry me, we went to this uh, nice restaurant in California where we lived at the time. And it was a beautiful moment. The moon was glistening over the water. Uh, just an amazing moment. I walk out onto the sand. I look at my wife, and she looks out over the water. And she takes a deep breath, and she goes, I wonder how many dead bodies are in that water right now. I was like, what? I was like, that's where your head's at right now? It's like, my head's at like happily ever after, greatest moment of our lives. And she's like, I wonder what the body count of the ocean is. I was like, what? I was like, I don't care. We've come too far. I'm powering through. I'm going to ask her. <laughs> Nothing's going to stop me. And she goes, nah, seriously. Like, what if a hand just washed up on the shore right now? I was like, I don't care. I'm powering through. I'm going to ask her. Nothing's going to stop me. I was like, did you say a hand with a ring on it? <laughs> ah, it's a fairy tale. Happily ever after. It's a Disney movie, basically. Same thing. Same thing. Um, I went to work today. How, how many people? Whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> work. It's awful. Um, one, for like 100% of everyone in this room and watching on all the amazing avenues of Denver Open Media, give it up for them one more time. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, pandering. Everyone... Uh, the weirdest person you know in your life for every single person is always, 100% of the time, a coworker. It's always someone you work with. And if you feel like that's not true for you, you're that person for sure. <laughs> Everybody hates you at your job if you don't feel that way. <laughs> and my job is so boring, I'm trying to like become the weirdest person in the office <laughs> just to entertain myself. So what I've started to do is, I've started just to do little things just to make people question if I am right for the job. So I'll just like go to lunch, get like a Subway sandwich, and then just sit at my desk, and then like eat it with like two forks, just <laughs> like I'm some sort of like Jared Scissorhands, <laughs> just, just a nightmare. People hate it, they just like zero eye contact, no one wants to talk to me, it's terrible. And then I'll talk to people, like if I do have a conversation just in passing with people at work, I'll just insert super, super personal information, but kind of not make sense. So I'll just be like, yeah, my wife and I, we don't have kids yet, mostly because we're super into podcasts. <laughs> and they're like, what did you say? And I'm like, yeah, NPR stands for Not Parents Radio, man. <laughs> they're like, I'm late for a meeting. I got to go right now. And they leave, and it's perfect. They question your sanity the rest of the day. My favorite thing to do at work, I did it today. On Friday afternoons, right before I leave, I send out a company-wide email to everyone. And I'll just start with some mundane stuff in the email, just basic, just logistical stuff. And then right in the middle of that email, I'll put heavy metal lyrics. It's the best. I'll just be like, hey, everybody, happy Friday. We did great this week. You know, good work. Uh, attached is an invoice. Please take a look at the numbers. Make sure everything lines up. Also, there's hell in my eyes and death in my veins. <laughs> the end is closing in. <laughs> Feeding on the souls of man and from their minds within. Follow me into the fire. So come on, 
follow me at Teeth and Fire. <laughs> Have a good weekend, everybody. Uh, say hi to your kids. Ah, send. Instantly, every time, two seconds after I hit send on that email, someone from HR just appears like a genie. They're like, oh, hey, Jeff, hey, how's it going, man? What's up? I got your email. How are you doing? Um, numbers on the invoice look great. Everything's awesome. Also, are you okay? What is going on? Oh, my God. Why are there two forks on your desk? What is happening? You psycho. It's a nightmare. I, uh, oh, you guys are so fun. Um, <laughs> I, I like living here in America. Uh, <laughs> that's a good joke. Yeah, America. Everyone's like, this guy. <laughs> Cute. I like, I mean, not recently, but on average. You guys get it. For, it's been fine. I found out in this country, if you work hard enough and you take advantage of the opportunities that come your way and you just happen to be like a 6'4 white dude, it is easy. Yeah, too close to home. I told that joke at Greenwood Village and they clapped like a little too hard. I was like, dial it way back. <laughs> Take it easy. I saw like Alexis being towed by Alexis to the show. Like, all right. Take it easy, Highlands Ranch. <laughs> the most American person I can think of, the most American dreamlike person is a guy by the name of Robert Sacre. If you don't know who that is, he's just a terrible NBA player who plays for a terrible team. And I went to a game, and they put him up on the big screen to interview him. And the first thing I realized when they put him up there was, oh my, Robert Sacre couldn't be more high right now. <laughs> like, first day of college at CU, we're just going over the syllabus, like Cheetos on the face, obliterated. <laughs> and I got so excited, because he had to answer a bunch of questions in front of thousands of people. So the first question they ask him is, Robert Sacre, what's your favorite book? And he goes, my favorite book? is the Jungle Book. <laughs> and then he goes, because it's a cartoon and I can watch it on TV. <laughs> I was like, whoa, Robert Sacre just gave the most American answer you could give to that question. <laughs> the next question they ask him is, Robert Sacre, what's your favorite color? And he goes, I don't know, man, probably macaroon. <laughs> yeah, not the color of the team that he plays for, or the color you may have thought he was trying to say, maroon. He said macaroon, a delicious baked treat. And I was like, dude, how did you just out high and out American your last answer? It's like, hey, bro, what's your favorite color? You're like, food. That's super American. My favorite color is a hot dog floating in warm broth. That's what it is. All right, thanks, everyone. I'm Jeff Tice. Thanks for coming out. Good up for Shannon, your host. One more time for Allison Rose, let her hear it. Jeff Tice, everyone! Yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much. I, you know, I feel like we would get along at work. I'm, yeah, I'm just saying, I like to spice it up as well. Not as much as you, though. I gotta use that metal lyric uh, thing. <laughs> um, so where can we see you next? What you got going on? Um, Sunday night, I'll be at Comedy Works downtown. You can come check me out. I'll be there with uh, Stephen AJ, uh, a local comedian who'll be in town. He uh, just moved to LA, coming back to Headline, so I'll be with him. Ooh, very exciting. Yeah, congratulations. That seems like a big gig. Uh, and where can we keep in touch with you online as well? Uh, you can check me out on Twitter and Instagram at Jeffrey Tice, G-E-O-F-F-R-E-Y-T-I-C-E. -E. That's it. I'm trying to chip, I trip everyone up with that. You just tripped me up. Uh-oh. <laughs> All right, let's give Jeffrey one more round of applause. Thank you so much. Thanks, man.